Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining today's session of our True Snacks webinar series, our weekly snack-sized webinars on topics relevant for you and your companies and clients. Today, we're joined by Joe Cashel, uh, the practice leader of Citroen Cooperman's Bankruptcy and Restructuring Services Group, to talk about uh, how to determine a path forward when you're dealing with a financially distressed company. So uh, looking forward to today's discussion and judging by the folks who registered, looks like this will be a relevant topic for, uh, for, for many of you and, and your clients and, and contacts. So we appreciate you joining us. We'd love to get a couple of admin items out of the way and then we'll turn it over to Joe. The first thing is uh, for questions and answers, please use the Zoom Q&A feature. If you go to your, the bottom of your screen, there are some little voice bubbles there that says Q&A. Um, please feel free to enter your questions throughout the discussion as we go. If they fit into what we're talking about at that time, we can work them into the discussion and answer them live. Otherwise, we'll hold them to the end when we have a few minutes reserved for questions. Um, the second item is that uh, as, as usual, as we do every week, uh, we'll be doing our snack basket giveaway. So there will be a random drawing for the, the attendees as we go throughout the session today. Uh, and we will notify the person who wins today's boutique, craft, all the other fancy buzzwords, snack basket uh, uh, after the session. So without further ado, we can go to the next slide and I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Joe. Uh, Joe, over to you, looking forward to it. Okay, thank you, Steve. And thank you everyone for attending. Uh, just a little bit about myself uh, very quickly. Uh, I've been in the restructuring arena for the last uh, 21 years. So always, uh, you know, doing uh, restructuring and turnaround work, uh, both inside and outside of the bankruptcy process. Uh, I've assisted companies in turnaround and restructuring work. Uh, I've helped lenders to work out, you know, underperforming credits. Um, I've helped companies, you know, uh, prepare for the bankruptcy process as well as represented unsecured creditors and liquidation trusts in terms of maximizing value for all constituents. Uh, today, we just want to discuss um, you know, four major topics here. Uh, what indicators uh, of financial distress you should be looking for, right? Whether you're uh, part of a management team of a company that may be experiencing financial distress or an advisor to a financially distressed company, or perhaps you have some clients that are experiencing financial distress. Uh, these are, we're going to talk about the indicators that you should be looking for. Uh, and then once those indicators are identified, then how do you go about performing a strategic ass assessment, uh, identifying the right strategic options to effectuate a restructuring and turnaround plan, and um, you know, how Citrin Cooperman can potentially help. Okay, first topic, indicators of distress. Um, there are certain questions that you really should be asking, right? Uh, so to the extent you know, it isn't obvious, to the extent you have clients um, that may be experiencing distress, ask yourself these questions. You know, does the company have recurring operating losses? Is the company underperforming relative to their business plan, their forecasts and financial projection? You know, has the company, and this is a big one, cash flows, has the company been burning cash over a steady or sustained period of time? Uh, typically, you know, we look back 12, 18 months, but in this environment, you know, if I, I just think, you know, three to nine months, if you see any hint of a continual cash burn, it is time you know, to start asking the other questions and look at your liquidity situation. Um, you know, and speaking of which, you know, is the company running out of availability you know, under its revolving line of credit? Are they having uh, difficulty raising capital? Um, are they in breach of any of their debt covenants? Uh, is the, are the lenders putting pressure on them as a result of that? Um, you know, has the company considered exiting uh, you know, unprofitable businesses? Are they in process of doing it? Have they even identified whether there are unprofitable businesses to divest. Um, you know, what are the inventory levels look like and what is the, what are the components of the inventory? Is, is a lot of it quick moving or do we have some slow moving that's piling up that we need to you know, consider and in firming up our collateral base? And are, you know, are our customers stretching their payables, you know, essentially not paying us in a timely fashion or as they have in the ordinary course of business? And, um, you know, are we able to pay our debts as they come through? Okay, now, as I had indicated on the prior page, cash flow. Cash is king, cash is the number one and most critical indicator of financial distress. 
and why you know most businesses fail. If you don't catch it in time, if you don't get your arms around liquidity issues and your cash, um, you know you're likely doomed to fail. Again, sustained operating underperformance, overinvesting, you know, poor financing decisions all factor into why your cash flows may be negative. Liquidity issues, right? Usually, you know, we get caught in, uh, called in as restructuring professionals, you know, when there's a liquidity crisis, you know, when it's we're on the brink of you know, uh, potentially missing payroll. It's we can, of course, we come in. That's what we're experts in doing, you know, addressing crisis situations and helping out. Um, but it's obviously a lot better to bring us in sooner, you know, when asking yourself those questions in terms of what are the indicators and how we can, you know, sort of head this off at the pass. Uh, secure lender issues, obviously, you know, if you get to the point where you can't make payroll, you can't, you know, pay your bills as they come due, the lenders are going to, you know, be on you about that. They're going to be requesting additional information. You're going to trip covenants. You're going to have less liquidity because of the blocks and other, you know, uh, protections that the lenders have put in place. All puts, you know, pressure on the company and, you know, makes it even more difficult for, for them to go forward, um, you know, in achieving their strategic business plan initiatives. Um, so some more things to, to look at. Obviously, again, you know, you want to identify these a little bit earlier, but to the extent you haven't, still time to turn things around. Other indicators, you know, pretty obvious ones, right? Um, key personnel uh, and change in management, you know, exiting of the, of the company, um, you know, shrinking margins, uh, accounting, obsolete, you know, IT systems, uh, things like that. Um, which are, again, more obvious that you should be looking for. And everyone will have a copy of this presentation after, so you'll be able to go back and, and take a, a look at this or have it for your reference. All right, performing a strategic assessment. So once these indicators, you know, have alerted you to the, um, to the distress situation, um, you know, more often than not, you know, I see companies try to you know, address these issues themselves. And yeah, there's a lot of capable management folks out there that can do it, and they do. Uh, but in other situations, you know, having a fresh perspective on things and bringing a third party in to really, you know, perform an in-depth analysis on, from both a quantitative and qualitative standpoint uh, can be very beneficial. That being said, you know, as part of our quantitative uh, strategic assessment, one thing that uh, a financial advisor can do is really, you know, perform a very in-depth analysis of the historical performance historical financial performance of the company, right? Look at the profits, look at the EBITDA. Why is this company underperforming and driving, you know, potentially you know, negative cash flows? Um, take a look at the, at the business plan, really kick the tires on it, evaluate, right? Are the, uh, the initiatives and the projections that are currently, you know, in place, are they feasible? You know, let's run sensitivities, let's test uh, the assumptions that are in the business plan put together by management and see if we can you know, refine them. Uh, certainly, you know, if the banks are involved, they're going to have, you know, their thoughts on it and we're going to need to put together some uh, sound plan that they're going to buy into and continue to lend um, on, right? And usually, you know, having a, an advisor in there to assist in that preparation really goes a long way uh, to creating that credibility with the lenders. Um, evaluating the company's current business, right? Looking at various pricing agreements, um, amounts of products and whatnot, prospects for the future. You know, is there a pipeline? Uh, what does the future business look like? Considering those and building them into your business plan is very important. Uh, assessing the company's cost structure. Are costs continually increasing, um, you know, in conjunction with flat or declining revenues? We need to look at that and consider that. Um, you know, looking at the client's asset base, and this goes back to you know, what I said before in terms of inventory, you know, is it truly what it's represented to be as part of the credit facility or the ABL loan, um, is the inventory you know, really quick moving or is there a larger component of the slower moving obsolete type inventory? Uh, looking at the fixed assets, potentially going out and getting a third party uh, appraiser you know, to look at all uh, of your fixed assets and get proper valuations. Um, that's gonna help in going into you know, any credit negotiations or when trying to you know, raise additional capital. These are the things that um, you know, those folks are going to want to know. 
And then once all of that's firmed up, you want to perform, you know, an overall valuation of the business. Um, again, that's going to go into the deck, you know, with the business plan, strategic initiatives, and whatnot to, you know, market uh, to both the lenders and potential equity investors. Qualitative, um, you know, essentially a SWOT analysis, right, would be one of the uh, first things that you would do. Look at the operational strengths and weaknesses. Consider what they are. Uh, assess the attractiveness and demand for the company's products and services. You know, is there a true demand? Um, and if there is, is it for all products and services or certain ones? Identify those. Um, what is our competitive advantage? You know, do we have a high demand you know, technology or uh, process you know, that really put, gives us an advantage over others? And if so, can we you know, adjust pricing accordingly? Um, you know, consider each of the key relationships with our lenders to the extent that there are more, uh, considering potential alternative lenders and looking at all of our uh, customers and vendors. You know, um, that's something that we want to make sure our relationships are strong and to the extent they're not, you know, make efforts towards uh, repairing and or uh, building upon those relationships. We need to look at our, our footprint. Are we playing in the areas that we want to be? Um, Obviously, certain areas may be more profitable than others. Considerations of whether to exit certain geographical reason, uh, regions or you know, extend our footprint in highly profitable geographic regions. Um, and then to the extent you know, we're considering a sale, um, you know, look at the universe of, of potential buyers. This is something we often do as part of a, you know, a bankruptcy process uh, when representing unsecured credit committees. It's something that's done you know, uh, by investment bankers or financial advisors in tandem with investment bankers and trying to, you know, market to various financial and strategic buyers uh, before a bankruptcy process and, and sometimes, you know, consummating a sale through the bankruptcy process. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, strategic options for a restructuring. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about six different strategic options. <clears throat> One of which is a debt restructure. Right, we can restructure the debt uh, to create more liquidity and allow us to fund operations uh, with either the existing lender, to the extent the relationship is not beyond repair, or uh, with a, a new secured lender. Sometimes, you know, the relationship is so poor that they just want out. They want out of the bad credit, and you know, a, a financial advisor can come in and assist with identifying alternative lenders, uh, bringing them to the table. Um, you know, firming up uh, or meeting the requests that these potential alternative lenders will make in terms of financial information required, including, you know, the business plan with the firmed up uh, asset base and whatnot for an ABL loan or some other term loan that they may want to extend. Um, but, you know, a, a new lender, you know, is certainly going to be cautious, especially in taking out an existing lender and what the reasons are for doing that. So, you know, it, it's certainly beneficial to have a financial advisor or expert in there, you know, to help, again, firming up the business plan and getting the company back on track to you know, meeting its um, goals and initiatives. Another option may be, you know, um, identifying and sourcing new capital, right? Uh, again, this is something, you know, a financial advisor can assist with to the extent that the company has tried and just hasn't garnered enough interest. Um, again, in addition to you know, just preparing um, the financial information that any potential equity investor would want to see, uh, you know, we can bring additional parties to the table. We have those relationships. We've worked with them many times uh, in both our restructuring practice and across other advisory practices that we have internally here at Citroen. And uh, it's something we'd be you know, more than willing to do. Uh, another option may be pursuing a going concern uh, sale. Right? A sale may be the option that's going to generate the highest and best value um, you know, for the various stakeholders. <clears throat> and we, we need to, to run various sensitivities to, ter to determine whether that is the case. Uh, an alternative to that may be a liquidation. And obviously, that's a last resort, not something we want to do. But um, you know, we have to make a best effort to you know, really pursue a going uh, concern sale and see if that does maximize uh, recoveries to the creditors of all stakeholders, I should say. And, um, you know, whether that be in, in whole or in parts. And that's, you know, something that's very uh, involved and complicated to do 
in terms of assessing what the combination would be uh, for a sale. But um, you know that's that's why you would bring in experts uh, to help you do that. Oh, and, and knowing that you know that it's you're going to run your sensitivities. You're going to determine whether a sale or liquidation is more advantageous. But even though there may be a gap between you know what a higher and better value is, there are other considerations that need to be factored into the sensitivities that you run, uh, which include you know the cost of you know, running a sale process versus uh, a quick wind down or an early wind down or liquidation, um, and there's execution risk. You know, do you have the proper team in place to do you know to conduct the sale and what is the cost of that, that team to put them in place? Okay, uh, this one's more of a, a combination, right? Combination of restructuring the debt and raising capital. And of course, you know, when bringing the parties to do that, you know, valuation is required, consideration of ownership and you know, what percentages are allocated. It's really gonna be contingent on you know, how the company is valued. And in order to do that, you know, advisors in there working, with uh, the lenders as well as potential equity sponsors. Big team, very detailed process, a lot needs to be done to execute that. And I think, you know, um, it's an option, often a good option, uh, but very entailed and should, you know, involve experts. I'm sure, you know, the lenders uh, as well as any equity sponsor are gonna have theirs. And, um, you know, in, in pulling all of those resources together, this may be a good option if there is a viable business to go forward. Which more often than not, you know, if you get in there and address those indicators soon enough, there will be. Um, <clears throat> it's the fifth option, right? Filing for bankruptcy. Now everybody hears that and thinks, okay, it's all over. But that's not necessarily the case, right? A lot of times filing for bankruptcy is really just, you know, a way, a medium, a vehicle, um, you know, used to restructure a company or to get a sale done. It's actually pretty pretty advantageous if you can keep the cost down uh, in terms of you know, using it to consummate a sale because you can cleanse the company of uh, most of its liabilities, um, if not all, unsecured liabilities and uh, undesirable you know, components of the business, undesirable assets, um, you know, and that gets left behind you know, with, the, with the estate. And those are monetized and distributed to the unsecured creditors so they do get something, but you know, at the end of the day, the buyer, whether it be financial or strategic, is, is getting, you know, the core assets, what it wants, the core business, without having to take on all of the additional stuff, <laughs> the undesirable stuff. Um, you know, in other cases, it's just, you know, the business is too far gone and, you know, filing for bankruptcy and putting forth a plan of liquidation, um, you know, maybe an option, or it could be a straight reorganization. There's no sale whatsoever the essence. It's just in order for us to achieve, have the best uh, avenue for success, to achieve our turnaround initiatives and goals. Um, it just the protections you know, of the bankruptcy process, allowing a stay you know, from creditors and other constituents coming after them, um, just allows them a little breathing room and time you know, to firm up the plan and, and put it in place and, and implement and execute on it. So not the worst thing in the world. Um, just maintaining costs and keeping them in line uh, is, is very important, very important consideration. And um, last but not least, of course, the liquidation, which I mentioned, not something um, you, know, you wanna see, it's the last resort. We gotta consider all these other options first, but nevertheless, you know, it still is uh, something that maybe, that will be considered by all professionals as uh, one of the strategic options. <clears throat> okay, um, I've been peppering this in throughout the presentation, but you know, um, here we are. You know, how can we help? How can Citroen help you to identify um, various strategic options through an initial assessment, um, and you know, ultimately help you identify what the right strategic option is uh, in order to restructure and turn around the business. Right. Um, one of the things I impress upon clients and I will impress upon here uh, to the various uh, audience members is you must act quickly. There is no time to waste. Time is precious. Cash is king. And the more time that goes by, the more cash you may lose. 
well about cash conservation. Earlier distress is identified and refer back to those indicators. Um, most of you know what they are. Again, you'll have the presentation to refer to, but the earlier, the better, the greater the likelihood of achieving a successful turnaround is. <clears throat> Again, we wanna get in there, we wanna perform a rapid assessment, look at those qualitative and quantitative issues and make decisions, you know, very quickly. Uh, and, and Citrin Cooperman is well positioned. They have a deep bench to turn around and restructuring professionals and other advisory professionals that have the skill sets needed uh, to conduct evaluations and um, all of the other various you know, things that need to go into uh, turning around. You know, getting your arms around the cash on day one, 13 week cash flow monthly. We have those capabilities. Steve's team has those capabilities. We can hit the ground run. Um, and again, you know, what I said. In terms of what we would do, this is liquidity management, operational improvement, turnaround restructuring, financial restructuring. This is everything I discussed throughout. Um, here's just a snapshot of the specific things that we would do in terms of you know, building fully integrated you know, financial models to help run those sensitivities for your business plan, for business plan purposes, uh, and in negotiating with the banks. 13-week um, cash flow models to get your arms around the cash situation on day one. Um, operational improvement initiatives to scrub the operations in terms of trying to um, you know, stand the continual increase of operating uh, expenses, you know, other overhead costs, and um, you know, debt restructuring initiatives and capital rates. I think about 12.25 now, so I do wanna leave some time for questions. Um, hopefully I didn't run through that too quickly, but um, I don't know, Steve, if, if you've seen any questions come in, be more than happy to answer them. Yeah, that's great, Joe. Uh, no, thanks a lot. I think, you know, we often talk about kind of that circle of advisors when a client's going through, you know, either a, a period of really rapid growth or a period of turmoil, right? Um, when you think about the kind of circle of advisors that we generally recommend to our clients that are coming into this situation kind of fresh, what are some of those key people that, uh, that we would introduce or that the client should be thinking through, um, uh, you know, getting in place to be able to advise them through this sort of process? No, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think we do have we do have key relationships or good relationships, especially you know ones that I've developed over the last twenty years, and everybody has their own relationships. So our seasoned professionals do have uh, relationships with various lenders. Again, you know, if you're looking to restructure the debt and, and do it through alternative lending sources, we can on day one provide you with a list of those. Um, Especially, you know, after meeting with you, interviewing, uh, discussing, you know, what the specific needs of the company are, maybe it's industry specific, um, you know, we can identify the right lenders there, uh, we can identify the right uh, potential strategic and financial buyers in a lot of cases to supplement any process that you might have in place with uh, an investment banker. Uh, we can bring, you know, different equity sponsors to the table, um, you know, at different levels, those that are you know, willing to put in a little more because they have it. Um, and again, back to the lending, you know, those that are willing to take on more risk, uh, you know, we have different tiers, different levels uh, of those types of parties that we can bring to the table. Also, you know, if you're in a, a situation where you have had one of your you know, key senior management folks recently leave, we do have uh, a bench of interim management folks. Um, you know, Steve's got a really deep bench and we have folks that can step in and act as you know, interim CRO, uh, CFOs, that's where you know, Steve's really strong. Um, and other you know, key senior management positions can be filled. Um, so you know, not only in there as the advisor helping um, interim management to the extent we can source that as well, but the current management. So you know, we, we have the relationships to help source um, these different needs and the professionals that would be brought in to you know, assist. And Joe, could you address how a trouble company should think about using its accountants versus versus its lawyers? Kind of what, what's that separation of responsibilities typically? Oh, well, <clears throat> you know, there are different legal issues uh, that are involved, you know, when determining whether you want to, uh, well, well, obviously when, when dealing with the lenders uh, in terms of renegotiating contracts or re renegotiating, uh, you know, lender agreement or uh, putting together, you know, memorandum or executing, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, deal with an equity sponsor. Obviously, everything needs to be, all those contracts needed to be, uh, you know, I's dotted, T's crossed, 
legally approved. And then, you know, to the extent that you're going to effectuate, you know, some sort of sale, reorganization, or liquidation through the bankruptcy process, you need, you know, bankruptcy um, you know, legal professionals that can take you through the process. There's a lot going on there, and without having, you know, specific knowledge of the process, um, you know, make, make it very difficult to, you know, meander the waters through uh, that process. Um, but you know, initially, it makes sense. You know, if you catch the turnaround situation early enough uh, to bring in just the, the advisors and let us help you work on the, the modeling exercises and the business plan uh, vetting uh, and things like that. And, and then when it, when it comes to, you know, getting one of, executing on one of those options, executing on one of those options, that, that's where, you know, the lawyers should be getting involved. And it's different types, right? Um, so, Different stages require, you know, different expertise, whether that be legal or financial. But if we catch things early enough, it should be the financial folks in it first. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Um, I think we have time for one more question. So can, uh, and if there are for other questions, if folks wanna pop into the Q&A window, um, if, we have, if we have time, we can fit them in at the end, otherwise we'll always do follow-ups after, afterwards. Um, and maybe as we address this last question, could we just put Joe's contact information on the screen so folks can reach out to him? Perfect. Perfect. There we go. So there's Joe's uh, uh, email address and phone number. So Joe, um, in terms of, of infrastructure, you know, a lot of the folks on the phone right now are CFOs, uh, controllers, um, business owners. Um, but when you, it, when, a, when a company hits a tough time and you come in to, you're brought in to help, what are some of the things that make it a lot easier for somebody like you and somebody like the, the, the lenders and the turnaround attorneys to work with a company if they've already had in place? Any elements of their financial infrastructure, scenario models, uh, any thought process that they've had? Um, what, what should people you know, be consistently working on improving to make it easier once they have to bring you in, the event they have to bring you in? Um, let's see, are you referring to... Uh existing relationships with lenders and trying to, you know. I think mostly internally what folks would work on. So, you know, like the, you mentioned cash forecasting, right? Um, certain financial metrics, the lender agreements, that kind of stuff. What, what, what are like probably the top three things that you ask for when you go into a situation? No, nope, that's a great question. I mean, is there an existing business plan? And if so, can we take a look at it and vet it? Um, is there, you know, an existing uh, FP&A group that might have uh, a financial model with various scenarios that were put together that would go into that business plan. Well, more often than not, and, and, and do you have your arms around the cat? What, what is your cat situation? A lot of times we go in and we find that uh, companies, you know, and, and it could be just be, the lack of sophistication may just be the result of you know, a company that has been growing so quickly and just didn't have that infrastructure in place and didn't have a chance to put it in place. So we can come in and say, all right, let, let's, there are lender issues, perhaps, maybe, perhaps there aren't, but you know, if we don't get our, our arms around the cash now, um, there may be issues, right? So we need to put together, you know, some sort of 13-week cash flow or maybe even an extended cash flow so that the CFO and the, uh, the head of finance and other, you know, financial people can use it to monitor you know, things on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, uh, depending on what the demands of the lender are. So, you know, it's really 13 week cash flow models, uh, fully integrated financial projection models, uh, business plans, um, you know, strategic initiatives, all of those types of things we'd want to see whether they have existing and help them to refine them, or if they don't exist, you know, help them to build. Them. All right. Because, yeah. That's perfect. All right, Joe, thank you so much for joining us today. Great session. Um, getting a lot of good feedback in the comments here. So uh, Joe's, again, contact information is up on the screen. Feel free to reach out to him at any time with the smallest question or the, the most problematic situation. He's there for you uh, to, to, to take questions and, and have follow-up discussions. So the moment everybody's been waiting for, of course, Snack Basket Giveaway. <laughs> so today's prize is going to go to Michael Harbour from Gold Belt Inc. Congratulations, Michael. Uh, somebody from our team will reach out to get shipping information for that basket. A couple of small housekeeping items before we wrap up. Um, first, if you're not on these emails and you had it forwarded to you from somebody, please sign up for our mailing list. Uh, that will be included in the email that you receive 
um, from, uh, from our team after this uh, session. So sign up for that mailing list. Make sure you get all of our future invites. Again, these happen every Thursday at 12 o'clock noon, 30 minute snack size uh, tidbits for your business. The next three coming up next week, we've got systems and analytics with our specialist Smidge of Simon uh, runs uh, large ERP strategy projects, technology uh, strategy projects, as well as analytics. We'll talk about some trends. Uh, we'll talk about how to be successful uh, and what you should think about if you're looking at those as priorities for this year. February 18th, the week afterwards, uh, we will look at sell side due diligence. We did buy side uh, recently, about a week ago, and Marilyn Garcia, uh, principal in our transaction advisory practice, will join us to talk a little bit about best practices and what we're seeing in the market for sell side due diligence. And then February 25th, something near and dear to everybody's heart, fundamentals of personal wealth. We'll be joined by Rob Brown, one of the managing partners of Apexium Wealth Management, um, to talk about managing personal wealth, especially in light of all of the uh, things that are happening in the investment environment right now uh, and with the new administration. Uh, if you want to look ahead one more week, which why not, right? We've got some great topics coming up. Uh, it's going to be robotic process automation, how to make your business uh, more efficient by the use of robots. We'll actually be able to see some demos of... Uh, but specifically for the finance area and how to automate finance that week. So really great sessions coming up. Hope, hope you join us. We'd love to see you uh, on some or any of these sessions. As always, please feel free to reach out with any questions and have a great rest of your week and a weekend. Hopefully we'll see you next Thursday. Thanks for joining us.